These are the most famous dinner rolls in America. And everyone's like, oh, you can't make these anywhere else. Are you sure about that? What makes a New York Times bestselling book? Is it the flavor, the perfect sear, or is it the texture? You see, it's all of those things combined. Not only is this a number one New York Times bestseller, it's now a two times New York Times bestseller. Isn't that beautiful? Thanks to you. But if you haven't gotten a book, then what the f are you doing? Go get one, dude. Link is in my description, and it's 40% off on Amazon, dude. 40% off, and the holidays are coming. Go and get this gosh darn thing. I appreciate you, I love you, and I'll see you next time. Okay, so today we are talking about Texas Roadhouse dinner rolls. Maybe everybody doesn't know this one, but a lot of people who have experienced it, myself included, I've had these before, believe it or not. Look, they're, they're pretty good, not gonna lie. I'm not gonna sit here and try and tell you a fairy tale that I don't like them. They're good. I get the hype on this one. This is one of the few times that I will get the hype on it. Now, am I gonna hop on the hype train? No. It's just wrong, okay? Anytime you hop on the hype train, it's a bad thing. It just never lives up to the true hype. There's always a better alternative, and that's what But Better is all about. So with all that said, let's Let's make this, shall we? Wow, we're here, the Roadhouse. Hell yeah, America, goddammit. Now get your f rolls. Now put your goddamn cowboy boots on, zip your pants up, and get to eating. Might want to unbuckle your belt. Wow, it is crowded. Good God. Why? I just want rolls. Well, they should be pumping them out then, right? Can I just get the rolls to go? For the record, the people that I met at the restaurant that said hello, if I seemed annoyed, I'm really sorry. I just like was looking for the rolls. First, I'm like, hey, where do I go for it to go? And they go, oh, go over here. And I go over there. There's nobody over there. So I go back and I'm like, hey, there's nobody over there. And then they're like, all right, we'll send someone over. And I'm like, okay, cool. And then there's nobody there still. And then I just see them all congregated talking. And I'm like, cool. I don't want to disrupt this conversation. Can you just grab me a couple rolls and I'll be out of here? And then I go back over. Nobody shows up. And they're like, all right, we'll send someone. So they finally send someone. And I'm like, oh shit, I forgot my wallet. Gotta grab my wallet real quick. I forgot about it. They peek in. I'm not there. So like, oh, there's nobody here that needs to be serviced. So they go back to their station. I come back, there's still nobody there. And I'm like, yo, and they're like, did you get your rolls? And I'm like, no, I didn't get my rolls. And then they're like, I always watch your videos. They just came inside looking for you. Yeah, I went to go grab my wallet. <laughs> just give me the rolls. Give me the rolls. But also, hello. Very sorry about that. Okay, we're gonna eat these fresh. So we're gonna go drive somewhere real quick, give them a little taste test, then we'll make them. Simple deeple. Right, we have a roll. Smells very sweet. Smells good. Smells like store-bought bread. This is a butt better first. These are actually pretty, pretty good. I'm not gonna lie. From time to time, one of my guilty pleasures is Texas Roadhouse. I'm not gonna sit here and act like I'm so special that I'm immune to the allure of Texas Roadhouse. Do I know how they make it good? No, not exactly, but I have an idea. This is hard, hard for my ego to let go of. They're soft, they're nice. We all know the honey butter's nice and sweet. There's something about these. Everybody thinks that they're impossibly good. And to impossibilities, I say nay. Nay! Are you gonna eat that? Cause I'm gonna eat it, but that's okay. Well, yeehaw, folks, we're making a roll worthy of a good old-fashioned buzz. Okay, that's, that's about as much of that voice I can stomach for this one. Right, so this is real simple. You start with the dough. Wow, who would have guessed it, buddy? First, snag yourself a medium-sized saucepan and add 465 grams of whole milk. Don't complain to me about grams. We're doing this right, okay? Papa geese, though. Place it on the stove over medium high, and as soon as that comes to a full boil, cut the heat, pour it into a bowl, set over an ice bath, and cool just until it reaches a lukewarm temperature. You've now scalded which helps prevent the dough from losing strength. Now, once it's cooled down enough, combine that with 120 grams of filtered water, get that mixture to about 95 degrees Fahrenheit, and add three and one quarter teaspoon or eight grams of instant yeast. Stir to dissolve and set to the side. In the bowl of stand mixer, add 1,050 grams of all-purpose flour, 110 grams of granulated sugar, and two teaspoons or 14 grams of fine sea salt. Optionally, you can also add about an eighth teaspoon, which is just a tiny pinch of diastatic malt powder. Again, optional, it just helps a little bit with color and flavor, really. Mix it all together, pop on your dough hook spiral thing, dough spiral, whatever. Start mixing over medium speed and stream in 50 grams of unsalted butter that's just barely melted to a liquid state. I've said this before, I don't want it to be hot, otherwise it'll kill the yeast and you'll never receive a geese from Papa's flower dusted lips again. Ah! Once all that's incorporated, add your yeasty, milky, mm -hmm, yummy. 
along with two whole large eggs, obviously not their shell, and for all you bakers out there, that officially puts this at around 65 to 68% hydration for any amount of this dough. Pretty much every single time you make these, regardless of the batch size. Let that mix until it forms a lovely dough that no longer sticks to the sides of the bowl. Pull that brother out, give it a few extra kneads till it's real smooth, then pop that into a large greased bowl, cover with plastic wrap, and let that rise for 1.5 to 2 hours at room temp or until doubled. Now while that's rising, we're going to make the coveted cinnamon honey butter. Oh, but wait, it's a little different. It's a charred cinnamon and vanilla bean honey butter. My ego is inflating already. So first get yourself two to three cinnamon sticks and either with a blowtorch or a broiler, lightly char them on two sides, let them cool, then break them into little pieces, toss them in a blender and blend on maximum speed until you get a very fine powder. Now in a medium sized bowl, add three quarters of a cup or 168 grams of salted, fully softened butter, not unsalted, okay? Salted. Hit that with an additional quarter teaspoon of fine sea salt, a pinch of fine ground black pepper, two teaspoons or seven grams of charred cinnamon powder. I like to pass mine through a sieve, just a pinch of fresh grated nutmeg, and the beans of half a vanilla bean pot. Give that a good whisk until very smooth, then whisk in a quarter cup or 30 grams of powdered sugar. Whisk nice and vigorously to incorporate some air, and you'll end up with a beautifully smooth butter that's so smooth, it could sweep you off your feet, even with the worst pickup line you've ever heard in your life. Okay, back to the dough. We forgot to give this one a personality because, uh, to be honest, I couldn't find the Sharpie, so I'm very sorry about that. But if it did have a personality with opinions, love, and candor, then take that plastic wrap off, give it a tender, loving stroke, and then punch every last molecule of life out of it for having an opinion. Pour it out onto a lightly floured work surface. Now listen up. I wanted to shape these into balls, but I decided to test out the classic rectangle Texas Roadhouse cut. First off, hated it. I've always hated it, and I still hate it. So let's make these look nice. If you're making a whole batch, cut them into 40 even pieces you can get the exact grammage of what that would be by weighing the whole dough and dividing that by 40. It's simple mathematics. Oh wait, I suck at math. Is this right? Now once you have your pieces, shape those balls by rolling around in circles while maintaining board contact constantly, and you'll get a doit little ball. Pop them on a baking sheet lined with parchment paper, cover them with plastic wrap, and let them proof for 20 minutes at room temp. Remove the plastic wrap, give them a light spritz with water, and immediately place into an oven set to 375 for 15 to 18 minutes or until they emerge absolutely lovely, like these fellas right here. Immediately brush those with melted butter, each and every voluptuous bun. And finally, give them a nice finishing sprinkle of smoked flaky salt. Yes, smoked. Trust me, all right? You want Texas here? Welcome to Texas, buddy. Now, what do you do at this point, Josh? Uh you eat them immediately. You see, the beautiful striking appeal to these buns in the first place isn't just that they're good, but it's eating them hot out of the oven. That is the biggest part, and it's what makes them so undeniably good. So let's slather on our fragrant butter, or fragrant butt for short, and see how we did. First off, the butters, look at this. Look at the color of this. This looks like lifeless breathe into it. And this is just desaturated butter. Taste test of my butter. I do like their butter, I will say that. And this is where you realize, wait a minute, this was never that good to begin with. The main event though. I have a couple things to say about this. Texturally, it's actually not significantly better. Hang on though, it is a little bit better. Now flavor wise, this is a perfect representation of how much better the flavor is. This is the Texas Roadhouse flavor, and that's my flavor. And I think it all comes down to using real butter, real ingredients, but more specifically giving it love, making love to it. Don't do that. All in all, if you want an improved product, it's not that much harder to just make your own, obviously, but we gotta get a little bit of the butter on there. That's stupid. That should be illegal. Kendrick, we just eat this. I want everyone's, this is too good. I want everybody's reaction on this. Oh, what? Yeah. Oh God, that's so it Should be butter. illegal. Stop. What did we just do with this? Wow. Wow. Yeah, we already know uh, that I think that I won here, uh, of course. We have a new taste tester that you guys haven't seen before. Ulysses, please come to the stage. This guy's a total jokester. If something's not all the way there. I don't know what it is. This was a stand-in, by the way. This one's cold, so. Don't be scared, all right? Are you scared? Terrified. Now, these are both heated up, so I don't want to hear anything about, oh, Josh, but you still give me the coach. Shut up. Now, is my mic on? Yes, we do, we do all that stuff for you. Don't you even gotta worry about it, girl. Here is number one, no butter, plain bun. I'm gonna take that out of your hand now, all right? I, I'm gonna take that out of your hand now, all right? Jesus Christ. And then we've got number two. All right, number two. You, you'd only have to take one. I need to try them both at the same time. Okay, so that was number two. Now here's number one. I'm gonna, do you want, how many times you gotta try this? Just tell me which one's better. Number one. 
Okay. I'm gonna butter them with their accompanying butter. By the way, number one was mine, so we've practically already won. We're gonna take it a step further, one with butter. Why does he seem so confused today? He's old. <laughs> All these millennials. Which one is it gonna be? Which one is it gonna be? All right, here's number one. Yep. All right, number one. Who eats like, I've never <laughs> seen this man eat like this in my life. Let's speed this up. Give me the other one. Here's number two. Now you can see that this, here, okay. That's number two. Why don't you take a break in between? He hasn't even swallowed the first like five bites. So good. So two or one? Do you know which one's which? He doesn't it? even know anymore. This one was good. Okay. This one, just the winner. <laughs> we got to the other end. It was a beautiful day we won. Thank you so much, Ulysses. If there's anything that you're gonna make from this video, it doesn't even have to be the rolls. Just make this butter. Whichever you choose to make, you're gonna be the winner. That's just a matter of fact. All right, let's just end this because we, we're at like 30 minutes of recording. Thank you. You wanna know what else brought the road back to Roadhouse? B-roll. <laughs>and that is it so we made our texas roadhouse dinner rolls how did we do yet again we did it i hope this is another learning moment where we can sit back and go wait a minute uh we can make this at home it doesn't require some fancy fangled way of doing it or it's a special secret recipe it's doable a human being can do it with their own two hands ah there's a big difference between mine and that's that they're round and they actually look nice instead of being these sort of like haphazard pillows that you pick up at like a thrift shop and you don't know where the pillow's been but you're like whatever i'm just gonna get this because it's like five cents and then you sleep on it and you're like oh then you gotta go to the hospital or something you know with all that said if you enjoyed this video or you learned something leave a like subscribe and i will see you next time don't don't do the pillow at the thrift store just i've not done it before but just you know for like a general